Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we have got a couple of NVIDIA news stories to get through. The first is concerning the Titan RTX, which we talked about yesterday, but now we have the official price as well as the specs on the $2,500 Titan RTX from NVIDIA. And we've also got information concerning significant performance improvements in Battlefield 5 when using DXR or ray tracing features in that game, which I've already tested extensively on multiple RTX cards, and the performance up till now has not been that impressive. Um, it's actually been pretty bad, to be honest. But they are promising an update that comes tomorrow that we're going to see a big improvement in performance. But we're going to start things off talking again about the Titan RTX graphics card, which, as I said at the start there, we now know the official price. It's $2,500, so that's more than double what the RTX 2080 Ti is retailing for on the Founders Edition card. And of course, like previous Titan generations, um, we shouldn't expect to see any aftermarket cards with the Titan RTX. It's just going to be the Founders Edition, and it does not have the name GeForce attached to it at all. So this is not being marketed as a, ga as a gaming graphics card, but you know damn well people are going to buy it and use it for gaming, and people that are benchmarking it will be benchmarking it for gaming but it is definitely um, geared towards being a more workstation card, and that is rather evident with the specs as well, which we're going to take a look at here right now. And they are saying that it's going to be out later this month, although we don't have a firm date, but I guess by the end of 2018, we will see the Titan RTX hitting retail stores or online shops or what have you. So here we are right now taking a look at the specs of the Titan RTX. We can see that it's got 4,608 CUDA cores, so... The specs that we talked about yesterday for that were accurate compared to the 2080 Ti. That has 4,352 CUDA cores, so 256 more CUDA cores than the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, which is not a significant amount, and that's really where you're going to get the bulk of your gaming performance from. So if, I mean, I know this is geared towards a workstation card, but if we are talking about gaming, which is probably what most of you out there would be interested in if you had the budget for this card... The CUDA cores is really where the bulk of your performance is going to come from, and an extra 256 CUDA cores is not going to make a significant impact. You might see about 3-5% to performance improvement just from that alone. Um, it does have more tensor cores, as we can see here, 576 compared to 544, but still far fewer than what was on Titan Volta, which is a $3,000 card. So in that aspect, it's tiered correctly being cheaper than Titan V because Titan V still seems like it would be the better card in most instances for workstation use. The biggest change on the Titan RTX compared to the 2080 Ti comes from the memory. First off, the amount of VRAM is it's now going to have 24 gigabytes of VRAM versus 11 gigabytes on the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, and that is GDDR6 memory, so they're not going with HBM2 like they did on Titan Volta. It's also got a higher memory bandwidth at 672 gigabytes per second versus 616 and a larger memory bus of 384 versus 352. So not a huge amount of, of memory bandwidth and bus increase, but definitely a hell of a lot more VRAM compared to the 2080 Ti Founders Edition. It's also got more L2 cache at 6 megabytes versus 5.5, so not a crazy amount. And they are saying for performance-wise, single precision, 16.3 teraflops versus 14.2 teraflops. And I also did notice that the uh, power on this card is going to require a little bit more juice to run. It's going to be 280 watt TDP versus 260 watts on the 2080 Ti. It's funny, I just realized that I said that the biggest increase on this came from the memory, when in fact that's not the biggest point of increase on the spec sheet. The biggest point of increase is actually the price. So I don't know who's actually going to buy these cards, but if you need them for workstation use, I'm sure they're going to be plenty powerful, and the areas that they chose to focus on by adding in like so much more video memory really does make it like this would be much better suited for a workstation rather than for gaming, because you don't need 24 gigabytes of VRAM for any game, even at 4K. I mean, maybe you can finally play Half-Life 2 in 8K and use up like 3 gigs of VRAM. <laughs> it's possible. But um, yeah, 24 gigs of VRAM, not really necessary for gaming in any way whatsoever. But yeah, for workstation stuff, you can certainly go ahead and put that to use. Now, our next story is concerning Battlefield 5 and the DXR patch, which we are going to be getting tomorrow, and a new driver, which is already out today. So you can actually download the new driver now. It's 417.22. 
And this is meant to accompany the update to Battlefield 5, which will give the performance increase when it comes to using DXR features. And there is a video over on the NVIDIA GeForce YouTube channel, which I will have linked down below if you want to go ahead and check out the developer update for Battlefield 5 and all of the things that they are doing to help improve the performance in BF5 and how they are achieving this. But some of the highlights are that they are just working to optimize ray tracing, and they're doing this a few ways. They've said that they have improved ray tracing performance against foliage and vegetation. If you saw my first benchmark video with the 2080 Ti, you saw the story campaign mission that I was going through where there was a lot of foliage and objects on screen that would be, you know, forced to have reflections. And even though they weren't making a huge visual impact, they were certainly hurting the performance quite significantly. So they have helped improve the ray tracing performance against foliage and vegetation, mostly by removing it. Um, from being an object that could be ray traced. Um, they've also used frame buffer data where applicable to increase overall ray tracing quality. They've removed inactive geometry from ray trace scenes, and they have also fixed the medium quality setting where it was not applying correctly. And probably the biggest reason we're going to see a performance increase is going to be because they removed inactive geometry from ray trace scenes, and that's exactly what it sounds like. They are basically going in and they're determining, okay, which objects in this scene need to be ray traced to have a large visual impact, and the ones that are not are pretty much not going to be ray traced anymore. And they explain this in, you know, extensively in the developer blog if you want to go ahead and check that out. So that's all well and good that they are fixing the performance of DXR features in Battlefield 5. I, for one, will definitely be testing that tomorrow once the patch rolls out from EA. So I'm going to be doing some benchmarking the rest of today so I can, you know, get some new data with the new driver and then compare that against the patch coming tomorrow so that we can, you know, get some real world performance numbers and see if it's actually as good as they say it is, which they're promising like 50% more improvement or possibly even higher. If you watch that video, I mean, it shows like some scenes where it went from like 20 FPS up to like over 60 frames per second. So that would be pretty damn impressive if they're able to do that with this patch. So Definitely something I want to go back and test just to validate what they are, you know, putting into their marketing here about this patch. But hopefully uh, everything is true and I'll have good news for you guys tomorrow on DXR ray tracing performance. And if not, uh, then you'll see a video from me as well where I'll just call them a bunch of liars, which is I, I'm, I'm confident that if they're going through the effort of making this video and talking about it, it's because NVIDIA and uh, DICE did get together to try to fix their performance as best as possible in this first game here. Um, with RTX, which hopefully over time it continues to get better and better with the performance impact that it has. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. It'll be the one with the Battlefield 5 ray tracing performance. As I said, hope you all have a good rest of your day. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Go ahead and leave a thumbs up on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you have been here for a while, you can always ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a moment of content when it goes up live on the channel. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for that ray tracing video. Turn.